So as I did just mention, first, let me say hello. My name's Petra. I am Petra Rose. I'm a physical therapist with the Zine team. My lovely assistant here today, here's Vanna. Hello, everyone. I, I'll be behind the screens today. So if you need to have any technical questions, I'll be happy to answer, all right? This is Daniel Lefebvre, one of our engineers. Um, so I'm here to answer the physical therapy questions. Dan can answer some engineering questions. Um, all engineering questions pertaining to Zine, I shouldn't say some. <laughs> Dan knows it all. He's been here for very, from not quite the beginning, but a long time. Um, Anyway, so we are recording the session. Um, we are going to make sure that everybody's line is muted for the presentation portion of things. Um, Daniel, as everyone saw, is our Zoom, Zoom operator today. So uh, any questions that you do have, um, it, there is a chat function. If you wanna pop a question into the chat function, awesome. Um, or feel free to physically raise your hand, or there is a way, there's a button you can push to raise your hand as well. Whatever you would like to do, Dan's gonna help to field the questions. Um, what else? Uh, so what, what we're planning on doing this evening is there's a few Zoom uh, zine topics that we wanted to cover. Uh, so we'll spend, it's, uh, it's a little after seven now, we're gonna spend about the first um, 25, 30 minutes or so, sharing some zine information. Uh, we're gonna give you a little bit of a tour of our production facility so you guys can see where the zine is coming from. Um, and uh, we've got a couple other things that we'll go over and then we really just wanna open it up to you. Um, we have a number of zine owners on the webinar. Um, so thank you to those of you who have already purchased a zine and you're joining us tonight. And then we have quite a few others who uh, have connected with us, have signed up for a newsletter, and that, since that was how you found out about this webinar. Um, uh, so thank you for joining us this evening and please, you know, ask questions as we're going along and, you know, ask for all of our zine owners. You know, we hope that you'll share some stories, some anecdotes of how, you know, how you've been using your zine, what, how it's been working for you um, in the time that you've had it, and um, so that people can hear from real zine users too. So without further ado, uh, the first thing that I wanted to share was just kind of the zine anatomy. Um, so I was going to give you a quick rundown of what are all the parts, how does it work, um, Everything okay, Dan? I'm gonna flip your camera just so you know. Oh. Is that nice with you? Nope, not at all. Okay. <laughs> was my my background was backwards, wasn't it? Yeah. So now it says zine instead of <laughs> e ease. Yeah. Knees. Yes. Knees. No, no knees, zines. Okay. Anyway. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Um, so I'm going to give you a quick little rundown of the zine. Um so for those of you who don't own one already, uh, this, this will give you a little overview. Um, you may have seen about it on our YouTube channel, on our website, on our Instagram, Facebook, variety of different places. Um, and then we'll take it from there. So right now, the zine that is in front of me here is folded up. Uh, so as you can see, it is relatively narrow when it's folded, it's about 11, 11 inches wide. Um, we have three different Velcro straps on the zine. The only one that's currently secured is across the front here. This Velcro strap, that's the only one that we recommend doing on a day-to-day -day basis. That if you are, um, if you're gonna be loading it in and out of the trunk of the car, that Velcro strap very nicely keeps the zine together so that it doesn't try to open up on you when you go to, when you go to lift it. So if I were to lift it right now, you can see it's starting to open. And just by re-securing this Velcro strap, Now, when I lift it, it's not opening up at all. Um, so, so there's that Velcro strap. There are two others on the back, which are not currently secured. Um, and we recommend the use of those. Uh, there's one across the back of the frame and then one that helps to bunch the bag in. So if you're traveling with it, if when your zine arrives, all of those Velcro straps are secured so that it's keeping it as together as possible. Um, if you're going to be flying with the zine, we recommend fastening all of those. 
Okay. So I'll open them back up. And then to open the zine up, we just push the two side frames apart and you can see it's starting to open. There are now two red handles, one here in the back. I'm gonna press down on that red handle. That's gonna lock open the back frame of my zine. And then the second red handle is off to the right side of the seat. I'm gonna move the handlebar out of the way and push down on the seat. And now the zine is locked open, okay? Um, when someone is first sitting in the zine, first time they're getting onto it, we definitely recommend locking our brakes. To do that, there are handlebars that when it's folded, the handlebars we will fold all the way back in along the side of, this, of the backrest. So I'm going to extend the handlebar. We have a long handle on the handlebar is our parking brake. I'm sorry, is our coasting brake. And so if I squeeze that, if I'm going down a hill, I would squeeze that and that's gonna slow the zine down. If I wanna park the zine, then I'm gonna squeeze the long handle and then the short tab as well. And in doing that, now the brake is engaged without having to continue to hold on to it. So I'll do that on both sides. And I've extended the handlebars all the way forward now so that once I do sit down on it, the handlebars are there ready for me to use. Uh, the next feature that we have on the zine is our seat belt. When folding the zine, the best place for the seat belt is draped over the backrest. This is going to keep it completely out of the way of the handlebars. There are retractors on the seat belt, so uh, it keeps the retractors midline and not uh, interfering with the handlebars coming back or the zine folding at all. However, these this seat belt has magnets in the webbing. So right behind where the plastic uh, fastening piece is, there's a magnet in that webbing there. There's also a magnet in the armrest. On both armrests, there's a Z about in the middle of the armrest. And there's a magnet under there. So these will magnetize. So now, once I sit down, this, the seatbelt is very easy to find. I'm not reaching behind me, I'm not, you know, reaching down into the mechanisms to try to find where the seatbelt went, okay? So everything is kind of set up and ready to go now. Um, so I'll step around and I'm going to have a seat. When someone sits down on the zine, a uh, quick note with the brakes, I do have the brakes engaged right now. There is still some wobble to the zine. Reason being all four wheels are on casters. So I have the back two wheels locked, so they're not turning any longer, but they can still swivel. Um, this, it's not unusual for any type of mobility device. So a rollator walker, if even with the brakes on, you can still push that, you can still move it around without much difficulty. The same thing is the case with the zine. Um, so it's just kind of something to be aware of. Uh, if someone is very concerned about the movement of it, then a great idea is to have it either pushed back against a wall, a heavy piece of furniture, something like that, up against the couch or some wherever they're transferring from. So it's very close by and, um, and that's going to help to minimize the movement as well. The other thing is that I am on a hard floor surface where the zine can move much more freely as opposed to a carpet. So just having a carpet underneath the zine is gonna give it a little bit more resistance and it's not gonna have quite as much wiggle. So now that I'm sitting on the zine, the first thing we always do is fasten the seatbelt. Fasten, but don't tighten. So there are retractors on this seatbelt. The purpose of the retractors is that we want the seatbelt to be snug when you're standing, but we don't want it to be dangling down to your knees when you're sitting. So we sit down, we fasten. I'll tighten once I'm standing then. If we need to loosen the seatbelt at all, the red triangles here on the front, if I lift up on those and just pull away, then that's loosening my seatbelt. And then you'll see, I'll show you how much I tighten it up. It's just a pull on the, the tails here in order to tighten. We've already gone over the brakes are on the handlebars. On our armrests, these red levers that you see here, that's our lifting mechanism. So the way I like to remember it is the brakes are on the handlebars. If you think of a bicycle, where are your brakes on a bicycle? They're on the handlebars. For someone that needs assistance getting up from a chair, where, where are you going to use your arms? Where are you gonna put them? You're gonna push from your armrest. 
The nice thing with the zine is we don't need to push from here. All we need to do is squeeze this lever, lean forward, and now the gas springs that are underneath the zine are going to help to lift me to stand. But the same idea of like which lever's which, the ones on the armrest are the ones they're helping to lift me. So I'm gonna come back down for a moment. When moving from sitting to standing, I have multiple options of places that I can stop. So I can squeeze the lever and as I start coming up, if I'm getting there and I'm feeling unsure about anything or I feel like I need to reposition my feet, I can let go of those levers. Now I can reposition my feet, get myself more comfortable, position better on the edge of the seat, squeeze the lever again, and now finish coming all the way up to my full standing height. Um, how do I know what my full standing height is? For those that already own their zine, um, we've, we asked for your standover height to be sent to us, which is essentially your leg length. Um, there is a video on the website that goes over determining how to figure out the standover height. Uh, and if that's something that isn't possible for you to do or you don't feel safe doing it, we have other ways that we can guide you through to find that right maximum height that, the, that we want the seat to go to. Um, as far as the maximum height goes, when I'm on the zine here, there is, we're gonna let Dan zoom in here with a close-up camera. Um, so there are two things that we set on the zine. We set the amount of lift that it's going to give you, which is based upon whatever you tell us your weight is. We have five different lift settings that we can set. And the other thing is the maximum height that the seat will go to. With both of those, our goal is to help you to get to a standing position. Here comes Dan with our close-up camera. So our goal is to help you get to that standing position and to get there safely and comfortably, that we're not going to launch you, so we're not gonna give you too much lift, and we're also not gonna lift you off your feet. So this block right here is our max height block very easily adjusted that there's a knob on the back side. We pull back on this knob and now it can slide up and down on the strut. And so for me, with the shoes that I'm currently wearing, I'm a seven on our max height car. There is in, um, in, our, in the manual, as well as on the website, there are, um, there are charts that demonstrate, or that, that spell out if you, if your leg length is 28 inches long, then we would set it at whatever number. And so on, for all the way from 22 up to 36, 22 to 36 inches. So um, Garrett, our inventor, he's actually too tall for his own invention, for this version of it anyhow, that um, he's got very, very long legs. Um, but it is, it's based upon leg length, not height. So I come up to standing and now the, the max height block stopped me from lifting off of my feet. And now this is when I would tighten my seatbelt. So the seatbelt, as you can see, is loose in front of me right now. So what I like to do, what we like to instruct is pull forward on, the seat, on those tails and so that you can see how much slack it needs to take up. And I'll turn to the side here so you can see as well that when I let go, you can see that it's bunching up behind me here, okay? So I'm gonna pull forward on the seatbelt and then pull out to the sides. And now I just snug that seatbelt right up against my hips. The benefit of the seatbelt is it's helping to keep me with the zine, the zine with me. It's also gonna to help to prevent falls. So as you can see, I'm standing with my legs right on either side of the prow of the seat or the horn of the saddle. It is a bicycle seat design. The reason for that is to help keep you centered as well as to help prevent falling. So if I should lose my footing, if I, if I pass out, if I just have a knee buckle and I start to go down between the seat belt, having it snug and the prow of the seat, I'm not, it's gonna help to prevent me from ending up on the ground. Whether I go forward, let me even show you from the side here. So if I come forward, even with feet off the ground, that seat belt and the prow of the seat are holding on to me. Okay. Uh, another feature that everyone really likes with the zine is the ability to sit at your normal standing height. So from here, we have the foot plates just over the front wheels. 
Um, they can, some, for some people that might be a little bit high to lift their leg. So I like to recommend, especially when you're first getting used to it, lock your brakes first, kind of start scooting yourself back onto the seat as much as you can, pushing with your hands. And then as you can get a foot up onto one of these foot rests, and now I can slide back and I'm sitting at my own eye level. It's my own personal bar stool. I can also get the handlebars out of the way. So now if everyone's standing around chatting, cocktail hour, whatever the case may be, I go to a restaurant and the only tables available are high top tables. I can now comfortably sit at that table on my own chair and not feel like I need to climb up onto a bar stool um, or jump back down from it. When I'm ready to get moving again, bringing the handlebars forward so that I've got somewhere to place my hands. And now this is just my normal standing height. So I'm just gonna slide forward, bring my feet back to the ground and I'm ready to go again. So how about moving with the zine? Um, I found myself quite a lot recently talking to people about how, they, how they're using the zine and what their objective is. Um, if there, there have been physical therapists that have said, what, like the person's not getting full hip extension. I can't use this for gait training because they're not, it's not going to accomplish the things that I want. So most of the video, a lot of the videos that you'll see, people are taking advantage of the zening feature, which is sitting your weight down on the seat. I can, um, I sat my weight back a little bit. And as you can see, my body, my trunk is behind my legs. From here, now I can coast or glide and the zine is carrying my weight. So if my objective is just to cover more ground with less effort, then this is what I wanna be doing. If I'm working with a physical therapist and I need to work on what my leg is doing when I'm walking, then instead of sitting my weight down on the zine, I want to be standing, most of my weight is on my legs, my uh, right where my leg, the top of my leg meets my backside is in contact with the front edge of the seat. And let me step off here just for a moment to show you this area is where my leg is in contact. So I'm not sitting all the way back on it. I'm not sitting further back. I'm standing and have most of the weight on my leg, legs. And now the zine, the seat of the zine swivels a little bit. So now as I'm standing tall, now you can see my trunk is directly over my legs. And as I'm standing tall and walking, as I take a step, I am getting hip extension. So I'm able to take that full step length and work, you know, so if it is a physical therapist that you're working with, or you want to specifically work on how you're taking a step, that's where you want to, that's the position you want to be in to work on something like that. So any questions up to this point? Any thoughts, comments? No? I see Patrick shaking his head. I can't see everybody's screens. I just see a few at the top. Uh, and it doesn't look like we have any messages in chat. Dan's gonna show me the gallery view so I can see who else is, but not everybody's sharing their, their screens. That's cool. All right, so what we would like to do is take you guys on a little tour of headquarters of our production facility. Um, so you can get a little taste of means being built in action. Um, we don't have anybody here on production right now, um, but we'll show you our production unit. And uh, we also have a trunk loader set up in the production area as well. So we'll show you how the trunk loading tool works um, to load the zine in and out of the car. So oh. bear with us for just a moment as we swap cameras to take you on the tour. Can they hear me now? Uh, they should be. Can you guys hear me again now? Thumbs up if you can hear me. I see nodding heads. Awesome. Right. I was just starting to say, God bless Dan for figuring all of this stuff out. <laughs> uh, make sure, well, let me make sure that yep. the can focus. Um, this is exciting, Dan. Just as an old movie guy, I, 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 <clears throat> 
Love you. <clears throat> I'm sure you'd love to be able to switch cameras like this back in the day, right, Garrett? <laughs> not, not a chance. <laughs> <clears throat> So just a, a brief moment here. What, what we started in was our, our demo demonstration area, uh, but this whole front office is dedicated to uh, customer service and development. Here we have engineering and, and Michelle, our new customer service is, uh, is doing excellent up here. The conference room and, and Garrett's cave. <laughs> how, how dare you. <laughs> but as you come to the back, the, the shop really opens up to uh, to the production space. And we'll, uh, I'm not sure if Dylan's still on the call, but we'll start it where he would start the tour. I'm you know, here. <laughs> you say you're here, Dylan? I'm here. You wanna, you wanna give any words? Oh boy. Uh, Throw out if you don't, I can thank it from here. Sure, yeah, why not? Why not? Uh, I'll give the, the quick gist of, of my uh, usual tour here. So it's a very simple layout. Before um, you have... get started, Dylan, uh, everyone, this is uh, Dylan Jenkins, our production manager. He and his team have done an excellent job of productionizing the zine uh, that, we, that we engineers threw together and uh, really making it something great. So uh, this, this space is really becoming something special here. Well, thanks for the kind words, Dan. Of course. I'll take, I'll take them. Um, <laughs> so it's, it's a really simple layout. Uh, and we have two big garage doors uh, in the back. And what we tried to uh, accomplish was have all material come in one door and good, safe, ready to use zines go out the other. So that's that's what we've set up there. And so on the other side is another door. Um, the, the material comes in, we build sub assemblies uh, where Dan is currently showing. Uh, those are things that maybe take a little longer to build smaller, more complex components of the zine. And then it flows over to where Dan is now. And that's our final assembly. This is where we turn those sub assemblies into the wonderful zines that you have now. So there you go. There's one in process there. And a few and over after here. that, we, we move the zines over to final inspection. Every single zine goes through our final inspection process. Uh, once it gets through that checkpoint, it is then ready to be packed and shipped. Boxes over here. And uh, Petra's truck is the one that del hand delivers every single zine, right? <laughs> <laughs> My trunk phone has our trunk loader in it. Um, is there anything else you wanted to add from a production standpoint, Dylan? No, I think we're good. Okay, thank you for sharing. No problem. So I have a trunk loader already fastened into my car. Dan, zooming in there for you. So there's lobster claws on the end of those red straps. They're going up to the backs of the seats. They're hooking right onto where normally you would hook a tether from a car seat. Um, so that's a good solid point in which to fasten. Um, it's intended to have something fastened onto it like that. Um, and then the trunk loader is a nice large piece of material. Um, so this is gonna protect the bumper of your car. It, the paint job on the bumper, it's also gonna protect your zine so that you're not gonna scratch things up. Um, and then we have these, this long red strap. And so to load the zine with the trunk loader, the best way to load the zine is, or, and to fold the zine is to have it in its lowest seated position. The zine can be folded with the seat at any height, um, but by lowering it all the way down, it's going to make it as com compact as possible. So I'll lower back down, take my seatbelt off. And now since I am folding it up, drape the seatbelt over the backrest. With folding, I'm gonna fold in the left handlebar first. There's a lever at the bottom that I squeeze that to rotate it back. Mm -hmm. And then I'll hold off on rotating the right one back until I start folding so that the handlebar doesn't get in the way of this seat release. So then those two red handles that I showed you about a moment ago, we're gonna lift up on both handles. And as I lift it up, the zine starts sliding together. Um, having the brakes unlocked and the casters unlocked make folding very, very easy that all of the wheels just help you to move together. All right, so now I'll uh, fold in the other handlebar. I'm gonna keep pulling up here. So now it's completely collapsed. And then fastening my uh, Velcro strap across the front. So now the zine is ready to go into the trunk. I like to 
give the advice of have the front end of the zine facing the driver's side. Reason being, this, the, the side of the seat, if, it's, if you're facing the passenger side of the car, that's going to end up facing down. And the top end of our trunk loader could get hung up. This could get hung up on the top end of the trunk loader there. So the, with the trunk loader, the straps are intended to be long enough that you can hold on to them while sliding the zine across. So you don't need to drop it down to the ground. So when you're putting the trunk loader in, you can see I have a very deep trunk. So I left those top straps pretty long so that these straps will still come to the ground. Um, the zine will fit in just about any trunk. If ever you're trying to put it in and the trunk is shallow, then you can, instead of putting it with the wheels facing towards the back end, you can actually tip the zine onto its back side. And now the wheels are gonna be facing towards the driver's side the zine is shorter from front to back than it is from the top of the seat, the side of the seat to the ground. Um, so if you've got a, a shorter trunk. So now that I have it folded, I've got the strap underneath, I'm actually gonna push the zine right up against the car. So again, this is where that big material is useful that it's protecting. And it's just now created a pulley system in my car. So I'm gonna grab the straps in one hand and start lifting. And I like to use the other hand to kind of direct. And then as, as I'm coming up, I'm using my body as I, I'm just kind of walking the zine into the car. And once I get it up over the lip, now I can just push it and the zine is all the way into the car. Once we're that far, then super easy, flip this up over the top, out of the way. And now I can close the trunk and be on my way. When I get to wherever I'm headed, pull the material back out again, pull the straps out. And I like to, again, just hold the straps in one hand, grab the zine with the other hand and just pull it towards me. And now once it's starting to come over the edge, I'm just going to loosely hold the straps in my hand. Whoop. They both straps got to one side, which is why I had that bit of a drop there at the end. Let me demonstrate once more. So as it's coming back out, I'm, I'm just letting the strap slide through my hand and the zine gently coming back down to the ground, okay? At this point, I can let those straps go because I'm moving the zine out of the way and I can flip everything up and back into my car. You can see it takes up no space in your trunk. So even if the zine isn't in there, the trunk loader can stay there. You can put other stuff on top of it. You could use the trunk loader to help you lift a suitcase or other things into the trunk as well. Um, and so that's, uh, that's our trunk loading. Excellent. All right. Uh, back to the demo. Uh, last thing that I had on my agenda of let something extra to share is another uh, accessory we do have available is a travel cover um, made of the same material, same strapping as the trunk loading tool. And as you can see, it just fits snugly down over top of the zine. The straps um, use Velcro again to, to keep everything in place. This piece here actually wraps all the way underneath the zine and there are two handles. So if you're flying, you can place this on your zine and then this is giving the, the people at the airline the idea of where they should grab it from. And hopefully they're picking it up, loading it, doing things with it the right way. Um, as I was walking back from the other room, I had, it, I had the zine folded. This, the zine is nice and stable even when it's folded. Um, so you can hold on to that side, the handle that's on the side of the seat and use it similarly to a cane that you are still getting some support um, and able to walk with it that way too. So, are you showing them this? <laughs> so Dan just folded one up that's not inside a travel cover to show this holding onto the handle 
that's on the side of the seat and being able to walk with the zine as well. So if, if your strength and mobility allow you to do that with less support, then that's an option too. So, hmm? yeah, how's, how's everybody feeling? Everybody having a good night? I guess it's not night for everyone. Um, do we have, are there any questions that anybody has? Is there anything that you would like to see? Um, any, anything at all? Any stories anybody wants to share? Wendy's got her hand raised. Oh. Uh. No, I just like that. Oh. Wendy, can you hang on, me? Wendy? We can't hear you. She's not muted. I know. Uh. Can you hear me now? Not yet, Wendy. I can hear. Her. Hmm. I hear. Her. Yeah, yeah, I can, I can hear, hear as well. well. Participants here. Translate. Uh -huh. yeah. Go ahead. Now, could everybody else hear Wendy and we could hear her? <laughs> yeah. I could hear. You guys can all hear. You know what? I hear her. The volume was turned down on our TV, which is <laughs> where we needed to hear you from. So everybody else could hear you. <laughs> Thank you. We are we're 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 learning as we're going here. <laughs> so no, Wendy, I I just want to tell you, Peter, so that you don't feel bad that you didn't do the truck letter correctly the first time for me that was really good because now i know what not to do so that go. was really good that you did that exactly well good i'm glad i'm glad that that helped it always it's, it can it can definitely be helpful to see you know when you when you make a mistake you learn from it right i haven't used the trunk loader in a while so <laughs> i'm just telling you so you don't feel bad well thank you do you have a trunk loader wendy or no no i don't not yet I haven't taken it outside yet. I haven't taken it outside yet. That's right. All right. Is there anything, are there any stories, any anecdotes that you'd like to share? You've had your zine for about a month, a little more than a month now? Yeah, about three, four, three weeks, maybe. But one thing that I think you, all, you guys know is that I've had it and I got really cocky one day and I took my hands off and I was going around a treacherous curve in our house. Why I took my hands off there, I don't know. But I did, and I tripped. And I fell forward. And I thought, OK, the zine's going on top of me. My husband <laughs> keeps telling me it won't tip. And I'm like, I'm going to prove him wrong. We're all going down right now. I did not go down. I hung there like this around the seatbelt. But the zine did not tip. So I thought it was really cool because you guys are all able bodies and you show us that it won't tip. But I'm here to say as a disabled body, it will not tip. Wonderful. Thank you for sharing that Wonderful. Thank you. Yes. That's what we hoped. Yes. Awesome. I see a few others have unmuted here. Uh, Patrick, John, you guys have anything you wanted to add in? I guess I uh, I typically use my zine to walk. I'm supposed to walk 30 minutes a day. I have multiple sclerosis. And I guess my therapist told me I should walk 30 minutes a day. Otherwise, I might lose the ability to walk. So, uh, And what really helps me is it just keeps, it supports my weight. Because otherwise, uh, I can't walk that long. I was using crutches before, and I couldn't walk as long as I can now. So now I can actually do the 30 minutes. Uh, and I took it uh, to my neurologist's office uh, last time I visited him, and I parked in the parking garage a couple blocks away and walked over there to the office and uh, showed him, and he thought it was just fantastic. And I think he was going to get in touch with Garrett uh, to see, you know, what kind of stuff y'all have done as far as getting approvals through uh, Medicare and things like that. Uh, he's, a, he's one of the lead neurologists at UT Southwestern Medical School. Uh, Benjamin Greenberg. I don't know whether you've heard from him oh, or not. No, but please encourage him to contact me. That's great. It's okay. just Garrett, Garrett at exokinetics.com. So okay. he's and I guess to also, I'd love uh, to... Oh, sorry. What was that? I'd, I'd love to talk to him. Okay. I, I think he has something to do with mobility uh, 
people with mobility issues as well. So, um, and I guess something else I do uh, with it is uh, there's a kind of new grocery store in town that has a, a wine tasting paired with appetizers and you have to wander around the whole store. They have different wine tasting and different appetizers. So I use this and I get lots of comments about it. Uh, everybody's like, oh, I know somebody who needs that or my dad needs that or whatever. So yeah, uh, I'm trying to and advertise for you. At the end of a big wine tasting evening, it's harder to fall too, which is really good. <laughs> yeah, now here in Wendy, her experience, <laughs> maybe I'll, hopefully I'll experience that. Yeah, that's awesome. I'm sure everybody going around to a wine tasting, something like that, they're probably, everybody else is standing, right? So you've yeah. got your own seat, you get to a spot and you can kind of sit back a little bit and relax more, right? Yeah, plus I got a cup holder on it. So Nice, nice. Awesome. Well, thank you for sharing all that, Patrick. Yeah. And definitely we will make sure that we get in touch with your neurologist and uh, okay. cool. see what we can, what we can do, how we can work with him. All right. Benjamin you Greenberg. Him contact you Benjamin or send you his Greenberg, name or what? Uh, if you want to email us his name, yeah, that, that's fine. Okay. If, if he's okay with you sharing his contact information, like I, I, I think that'd her, be okay. Right? All right, guys. Like, how'd you find out about this? And I told him, he's like, oh, I need to go to that disability expo next time around. So it's all right. I've sent his contact information to, to Ryan and Garrett, and we can share it with the team. Awesome. Cool. Thanks, Jane. That's Jane. That's one of our other Zine team members. Okay. <laughs> hey, everybody. Great, great webinar, Petra and Dan. Thank you. Well done. Very and well Dylan. done, you guys. Awesome. All right. Well, thank you, Patrick. Uh, John, we see that you're unmuted. Is there anything special you wanted to share? Talking to me, dear? Yes, sir. <laughs> no, I, uh, Garrett came up and visited me you know, three or four weeks ago. And uh, I told him that I was waiting until the stupid COVID threat uh, sort of went away so I could make myself to get into a mall mm -hmm. and, and uh, you know, do my thing that way. Otherwise, I'm limited to going around my driveway. Mm -hmm. I think between the conversations I've had with you yeah. and uh, just uh, working things out on my own, I don't have a problem. I, uh, I'm, I'm ready to go. I, I don't think I'm ever going to I don't think I'm ever going to fly again because of some other physical issues. So wheeling my suitcase down the, the concourse is probably not in my not in my plans. But I'm looking forward to really as soon as this COVID scare gets over with, which <laughs> who knows? I look forward to uh, to getting out and, and doing some real zining. But I think I've I think I've mastered uh, what it is I need to master in order to, to make it work. Awesome. That's well, great, John. Thank you for sharing. John was my roommate at Tufts in the, er, in the 60s. That's awesome. One of my favorite guys on earth. Yeah. <laughs> Don't admit that to too many people. Well, I only know four or five people. So. <laughs> <laughs> I, do have, I do have a question. Yeah. How please. long does it take? Um, from the time, let me give you a thing in here. How long does it take from the from the time you start assembling a zine to go from from the beginning until you've got one put together? I'm gonna, Daniel's joining us <laughs> because I don't know the answer to that question, but he does. All in all, the, an actual zine takes a few hours to put together, um, but not all of it happens all at once. Uh, Dylan mentioned that we build the subassembly separately. So things like the armrests, the handlebars, the wheel assemblies, all of these things are built separately. And then everything comes together. And, and once that happens, it's all it's all pretty quick. But the cumulative process takes, it takes uh, I think it's about six hours total. Uh, but that's something that we're, uh, we're working on. Yeah, that's we're, we're at about seven hours. Right seven now. hours. Thank you, Dylan. There's Dylan. Yep. Awesome. <laughs> Thanks, Dylan. <laughs> And we've got, a, we've got a question from Sam asking uh, when we're going to start shipping outside the United States here. Um, Sam, just so you know, right now for regulation reasons, we can only sell it within the United States. But uh, once we ship it, 
<laughs> there have been some zines that have left the United States. Um, they have gone to an address in the United States, a friend, a family member, whomever, of someone who is in a different country, and then they have moved it along to its final destination. And uh, um, with yeah. time, we're going to be able to open up into more markets. Uh, you're asking about India specifically. Um, it's it's about it's about time and, and, and getting a regulatory approval for each of these countries as we go. Mm -hmm. uh, right now, we're starting in the states. Uh, we need to get our get our bearings, and and once we are uh, really ready, we're going to be able to open up into international markets. Yeah. So we're we'll get there as quickly as we can. Mm -hmm. um, definitely not before the end of the year. I uh, don't know even before the end of next year, but that is that is definitely in our sights. We plan to have zines all over the world um, as soon as we can. And I see Wendy's got her hand up again. Sorry, um, I ask a lot of questions. Um, Peach, are you anywhere near? I know you used to have this. I saw a video, but I need to know how to walk down a curb. Can down you curb. demonstrate that? I can, I will demonstrate that in a moment. Um, I saw that Ron had a question too. I'll get it out. That's fine. Um, or it looked like Ron had taken himself off mute as well. Uh, but, um, Ryan asked something about the I trailer. Did. Yeah. Ryan, our, uh, our lead engineer, asked, uh, um, does anybody have any questions about our, the trial period, returns, warranty, any of those? Any of those types of things? Does anybody have questions about them? Can we just run through what it what it is real quick? Well, over seven. Sure. So while Dan is getting out the step for me to demonstrate how to go up and down a step. Excellent question, Wendy. Thank you. Um, uh, so every zine, when it arrives at your house, you've got 14 days to try it out. Um, with support from our team here. Uh, so, you know, we're here, you, everybody should receive an email within usually, hopefully prior to your zine arriving, but within a couple of days of it arriving that it has links to our website for where the training videos are. It has a link to schedule a one-on-one -on -one Zoom session with me uh, to go over things. Um, and then we're working on following up and, and calling uh, within you know over about a week or so into your trial to check in, see how things are going. Um, so that's so that's our trial period. Um, if at the end of the two week trial you feel like this just isn't working for me, then you know we'll we'll talk to you about it. We'll I I like to try to hop on a call with somebody if they haven't taken advantage of that yet just to see, is there anything that, that maybe a tip that I can give that might make it easier to use? Um, and if ultimately it's just, this isn't the right thing for me, then uh, we, we do take returns. Um, and then there's usually a few weeks or so before the, the money is refunded to you with a $200 restocking fee. Um, as far as a warrant, our warranty goes, the frame, of the zine, the non-moving metal frame of the zine has a two-year warranty. All of the plastic and moving parts have a six-month warranty. Um, and as far as any maintenance goes, we're currently your maintenance shop. Uh, we have plans to connect with other places around the country to be able to do maintenance in the future. Um, but for now, if something breaks, if you're having trouble with trouble with your brakes. Um, <laughs> anything like that, it's just give us a call, reach out to us, and we'll, um, Ron has a question about adjusting the brakes. We'll go over that in a moment too. Um, so any, any type of maintenance, anything like that, ideally if we can hop on a call with you or if you can send us pictures and we can see what's going on, um, if it's a piece, a part, whatever that we can send to you and you can do the repair yourself, we'll do that. And send a video along with it to guide you through. If it's more involved than that, then we would coordinate either if you're close by, we'll have you come down to us and we can do the repair. Or if you're not, then we would coordinate shipping the zine back to us 
getting it repaired for you and then shipping it back out to you. Okay. So Wendy's question about navigating a step. It is possible to navigate a single step on the zine um, as long as it's not super high. So I hadn't refastened my seatbelt yet. So let me do that. And because I folded it, it was over the backrest instead of easily on my bag net. All right. So a single curb, um, if it's to code, then I think it shouldn't be more than like six or eight inches. Um, and going up a step is very much more dependent upon your leg strength. Where going down a step is you're, you are actually kind of riding the zine down the step. So uh, it just kind of depends on how your strength is in order to get up the step. So when you approach a step, you would come all the way up and kind of bump the front wheels right into the step and lower yourself all the way down so that you can engage your caster lock. Okay, you don't have to engage the caster lock. By engaging those caster locks, it's going to allow the rear wheels to roll up the step once you get to that point, okay? So now I'm gonna come back up. I'm not gonna come all the way to full standing because I need to come up. I wanna be able to lift the zine up, to lift the front wheels up onto this step. So I brought the zine part of the way back to my full standing and now I'm going to actually stand myself all the way up. From this point now, I'm going to lift the front end of the Xena and roll it forward. Um, Dan, if we can, can you bring the side camera over right in front of me and do and share both of those? So we're at, <laughs> we need a longer cable. I just want you guys to be able to see both the side view as well as the front view. So we're gonna show both of these cameras here. Okay, so you see, you see two of me now, right? <laughs> so as I said, I've run the front wheels into the step. Now I'm gonna use my handlebars. I'm standing, my weight is on my legs. I don't have any weight down on the seat right now. I'm lifting the seat up. And so you see, I have it low enough that I have space to be able to lift. So I'm lifting the seat up and putting those front wheels up onto the step. At this point now I am supported by the zine again, okay? I can squeeze my brakes just to kind of give me a little bit more stability because now from here, I'm going to lift a foot up and with squeezing my brakes, I can actually lift both feet up and now I'm gonna let go of my brakes and roll myself forward, okay? So I am fully sitting on the zine right now. My back wheels have now hit the step. So this is where I do need to stand up a little bit and pull and now those rear wheels are rolling right up the step, okay? To go down a step, I would do the same thing that I would walk all the way up so my front wheels are right at the very edge of the step. From here now, I'm gonna lower my seat down enough. Dan's backing up that camera a little bit. So that you, oh, there we go. So you can see, yep. So now I'm gonna lower myself down enough so now I can reach a foot down. I didn't go quite far enough. So that I can reach my foot down and put it all the way down on the ground put both of my feet down. The whole zine is still on the step. I'm fully supported by it. From here now, I'm going to roll forward. So I'm not holding, I'm not squeezing my brakes. My brakes are not engaged. So I'm just rolling forward and bumping those front wheels down. And now I'm gonna just keep walking my feet out. And now the back wheels bump down as well. So that is gonna be, and now my casters are locked so I can't spin around. <laughs> So I'll unlock those casters. So that's gonna be the safest way um, with the most, most support to be able to go up and down a single step. So the step very, itself- Very needs good, to, very good, Petra, very good. Um, the step needs to be big enough, wide enough that the zine can fit on it. So if it is just, if it's a normal depth stair, then, and you have more than one to do, then, you're going to want to get off the zine. Um, one of our testers who was testing a prototype for us last year, what she would do, she had like four steps to come down from the front of her house and they were normal steps. So what she actually did was she would keep her zine folded up. She had the zine all the way folded up 
and she would actually like walk the zine down the step. So if it was it was up on the stair here, then what she would do with it, she would get herself down the step and then bring two wheels down and then bring the other two wheels down. So now that the zine is the same is the width of what the stair is. And so she would walk it down the stairs like that. Um, and then she could have kind of done it the same way to go back up that she could lift up the front two wheels and then lift up the back two wheels and do that all the way up the stairs. That all very much depends on what your own strength balance. And that's good. I haven't seen that one before. That's great. Yeah. So we'll have to we'll have to video make a video of that one at some point too, Garrett. <laughs> Was that, was that helpful, Wendy? Yeah, awesome, awesome. All, All right. right, Ron, we've got a. You have anything specific to ask about the brakes, or are you just curious about how to adjust them? Well, no, it, uh, specific. Uh, when I go to go up uh, to the bar stool level, yeah. uh, I'm pushing off on my legs, and the the back wheels will still turn so it's like i'm trying to get up on it but it's going behind me i mean it what i and it's a little uh little i don't know because i've got them locked i'm not really holding on to them because i if i put more pressure on both of those bars to you know keep the thing from going, then it takes that uh, that lock off. So when you're going, so are you, do you lock your casters too to stop them from swiveling? Uh, or do you, are you yeah. just lock, hmm, yes? No, I, I just lock it. You just lock the brakes on your yeah. head? Yeah, okay. and when I'm, uh, I tried this the other day, um, I made sure, uh, well, I just put the locks on and I tried to back up with it and the wheels would turn. And uh, then I uh, made sure that I had both of the brakes pushed as, pushed down as far as I could go and you know tried to back up and it didn't move. It, so, it did move or it didn't? It didn't move. It did not. Okay. So it's to me, it's like the the brakes aren't fully engaged when I put the brake lock on. Put the parking brake on. Okay. Right. Yeah, the parking brake. Yeah, and when you're trying to move yourself back, you're not pushing with your hands from here. You're. It's better to bring your hands back here. Um. So. So first question, question Ron. How hard is it for you to squeeze and activate that parking brake? Do you still have a lot of excess strength there? Oh yeah, that's not a problem. It, and it, that's why you know uh, when I'm when I'm holding the parking brake uh, as tight as I can do it, or as far as it goes, really. You know, I know I'm not going anywhere, but like when I'm uh, when I get up to sit in it up at that you know, the bar stool level, it's mm -hmm. rolling back on me because I I, uh, I don't want to use my hands to keep the locks down because as soon as I release those, well, then I'm up on, up on the top level, you know, sitting right. and I don't want to move from, you know. Yeah, that's, a, it's an excellent question, an excellent point. Um, I'll let you. Right. So uh, the parking brake is never as a, as effective as squeezing as hard as you can there. Uh, it's it's like a, a set position somewhere towards that 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 squeezed range. Mm -hmm. We do have the capability to tighten the brake line, however, so that it will take a bit more force to squeeze, but it also sets it at a harder level uh, to be more effective in that parking brake position for you. Uh, it's a it's a fairly simple adjustment adjustment to make. Um, we, and we can demonstrate it here, but it won't be super clear on camera. I, I have um, images I'll put in chat, and I can also email them to you afterwards, Ron. Okay. So do, do you yeah, want to? I'm, uh, I'm also uh, with my uh, lack of balance and 
lack of leg strength. I've been in a wheelchair for a little over seven and a half years now. So, you know, like moving like that backwards, if I'm moving and I'm not on the ground, if my feet aren't down, I have no, you know, they're, it's going to go where it's going to go. Right, right. Yep. So, Ron, if you see um, in the chat for this, um, I, I just sent a couple a couple files and I'll follow up in an email afterwards. Okay. Uh, but what we're looking for is just beneath the seats. Uh, each. You you see the yes, I actually do. Yeah. So, um, we're going to use the, the close up cam so you can see it. So, what Dan just did, he just released the. The seat and the backrest, we, so that we, we can. We cannot make any adjustments if the brakes are on. Hmm? We cannot make oh, yeah. adjustments if the and brakes so you, are on. And so the brakes need to be disengaged okay. in order to adjust the tension on it. So, give us just a second here. We'll get the other. What what you're going to look for though is from the bottom of your handlebar. You'll there's a cable that comes out uh -huh. from the bottom of that handlebar. That's your brake line. And that's, you're gonna follow that back under the seat. You're able to, um, to see it better when you partially disengage or partially fold the zine up. Okay. So now Dan's gonna come in here with... Camera here? Okay. So here's our camera. So now we're from the back of the zine here. So what I'm looking for is a small black cylinder that interrupts okay brake line. Each, each brake line from the handlebar all the way back to that rear wheel is interrupted along the way by this small barrel. You'll see on both sides, there's another one right on this side. And like I said, it's not incredibly easy to see on camera. Yeah, I see what you're talking about. Uh, and you'll see it underneath your own zine as well. And what we're going to do is, is pinch, pinch half of it and twist the other half. Like I said, it's a little confusing on camera, but I, I'll happily uh, share what, what we need to see uh, for you to, to be able to do that as well. And okay. there is on the website, There's a video. there is a video on the website uh, for brake adjustment. So okay. if you go on the website, if you go, if you click on the training, uh -huh. um, tab at the top for anybody at all. Training has pretty much everything that I went over when at the beginning, um, as well as as you go down towards the bottom, it has adjustments. So it's got adjusting your brake lines. It has adjusting that max height car that I talked about that that's mm -hmm. your, that's really the fine tuning you get to do to, we set it based on the leg length that you told us. Um, but you can play around with that. If you first get on it and you stand up and there's space between your backside and the seat that you've got like an inch or more of space, then you might want the seat to come up higher. And so that's something that you're able to make that adjustment on very easily. Um, it does also review adjusting the maximum weight that, or the amount of weight that the zine is lifting. And Ron, I think you and I with your, bro your brother, yeah, yeah. We did we did make that adjustment. Right, um, right. We got that straightened yeah. out. <laughs> yeah. So that one, that one's a little bit more challenging, more difficult than the uh, the the max height adjustment. Um, uh -huh. But those, so those, that's where you will find a lot of those pieces of information. And if you look and the video, like it doesn't make sense or you're having trouble with it, just send us a message. You know, okay. send an email, um, and we'll uh, we'll get back to you as quickly as we can. And uh, Dylan beat me to it, but he also shared <laughs> he shared the link for the uh, the video that you need to to see from our website right in that chat as well. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So there and, are some. And Ron, I have a question, Ron, which is this issue happens when you're standing up and raising yourself up with the zine, or when you're getting up into bar stool mode. With... Uh, getting up into bar stool mode when I'm when I'm uh, trying to sit back in into mm -hmm. it uh, when I push off on my legs to, you know, get, get further back on the seat, the, the, the whole thing kind of moved okay. back a couple in, uh, inch or two, something like that. And yeah, uh, that may, that may be partly because the casters, because the casters might have been pointed to the rear and the casters will give you that much motion when they swivel around. But the so, other thing that I would suggest is when you're getting up into barstool mode, if you can put one foot up on the footrest, and then once you push back from the footrest, it can't make the zine move at all. So mm -hmm. if you can do that shift back by getting your feet up, 
<clears throat> and then, you know, then pushing yourself back. Okay. Then you have no contact with the floor to make it move. That may be part of it. And that's as Garrett just mentioned too. So right now you can see my rear casters are pointing back, right? So right. I just, I walked up to wherever it is that I'm going to and all of my wheels are pointing so that I can go forward. So if I lock my brakes right now and I lean back, you can see how much the wheels just move. And it's not even that the wheels are turning, it's that those casters spun. Uh -huh. And so now, but yeah, I mean, as I'm doing exactly what you were saying that I'm kind of leaning back against it. And yes, my wheels are turning a little bit because as Dan just went over, the, the parking brake being engaged isn't as tight as really just squeezing tight onto that. So now as I'm doing that, now the wheels aren't turning. Okay? Right, right. That's just kind of an inherent thing with oh, any, you know, any types of brakes. So um, Peter, show, show putting your foot up to help and, you get and back in bar so much. Yep, and then so getting one foot up, and I know for many people, even just like starting from here and trying to lift your foot up might not be the easiest thing, whether you've got enough motion in your hip or your knee to do that, the strength to lift it up may or may not be um, there. But if you can get a foot up, then you're pushing on the zine. So instead of pushing on the ground, right? right okay. So now if I'm okay. pushing from here and I can put my hands and now slide myself back, bring my other foot up, then that should hopefully eliminate that. I don't yeah. know what's going on with our main camera, but it is fuzzy right now. Uh, <laughs> but I have to say, you know, after being in, well, since I, I've had this couple months now, and it's been, you know, I've been in a wheelchair for like seven and a half years, uh -huh. and to now walk around and be at, uh, the regular height of everybody else. Oh my God, uh, it makes a world of difference. Yeah. Hey Ron, was, uh, we're gonna be calling you and getting you to video that line. That's a wonderful line. <laughs> <laughs> I wanna put that on the internet. That was well said. Very Thanks. I, and I just remember Ron in Chicago that like you were walking around and your brother's like, he hasn't walked that far in years. I, I, I was shocked because you just kind of took off. You were doing awesome. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I. I got a, a balance issue, and because of the balance issue, I've had, well, my legs aren't as strong as they used to be, and uh, uh, now if I, uh, like you were saying, that it just kind of gives me enough stability that I don't lose my balance, and so I'm walking again, and uh it feels so good. That's awesome. No, keep saying these things. I, I we should be recording this, are we? We are recording it. Yes, Garrett. I <laughs> went over that at the beginning. <laughs> All right. Do we have any other? We've gone a little bit more than an hour at this point. Does anybody else have any other questions, comments, concerns, thoughts, stories they want to share? If not, we can let everyone enjoy their Wednesday evening. Thank you. Oh, and thank you, Peter. Thank you, Dan. I wasn't go. sure who the dot dot was there. Hi, Connie. Nice to see you on the chat. Uh, thank you very much for for your your input here. It's it's great to hear from you. And I've got uh, I've got something from Wendy again. Oh, Wendy's no Wendy's applause. Oh, Wendy's clapping. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Wendy. Thank you all for joining us. Um, can you pop the chat up so I can see it too? Because yeah. I can't see it. it. says from dot dot. That's uh, Connie well, Ambrose. I don't know who dot dot is. That's, that's Connie Ambrose. Connie Ambrose. Awesome. And Connie, we, we did a, a tour in the back. Your zine's back there. <laughs> <laughs> Ready to go. <laughs> awesome. Well, again, thank you all for joining us tonight. Uh, we are planning to do this on a monthly basis. One question for those that already have a zine or maybe are anticipating their zine arriving or thinking about ordering one, whatever the case may be. Um, I know that, that we've done, we've given some exercises that you can do on your zine. Would any of you, if you wanna raise your hand or give us a thumbs up or whatever, how many of you would be interested if we had like a zine gym type of thing or we had somebody that, that did I don't know how frequently, but if we'll even say just once a month, an exercise program that you could 
log into and and join and do exercises and be guided through some exercises. So Wendy, Wendy's giving me a, a high five there. Yeah, thumbs up for Marissa too. Awesome. Awesome. So so there is some interest. Um, that's something that we're we're gonna be working on. Um, and and uh, just since I have all of you here at the moment, thought I'd ask. Um, awesome. I'm feeling good. Cool. All right. Thank you, everyone, for joining. Good night, all. Have a great Thank night, you. everybody. Thank great you so job, much. Great job, Dan and Peter. Thanks, for being here. How you doing? Thanks, Dylan. Thank Thanks. you so much. Bye, everybody. Bye.